السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. بارك الله فيكم وكنتم وقابل وشافكم. I ask and I beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your efforts inshaAllah and to make us of those who gather upon the haq. And I ask and I beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who gather on yawm al-haq upon the haq. Majalis al-dhikr wa jalis al-ilm are definitely blessed. The gatherings of knowledge, the gatherings in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned are gatherings which are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are gatherings, Allah azza wa jal, He has allocated specific malaika, angels, that search the world for these majalis. And when they find such a majlis, they surround it, يحفون, and they fold their wings out of respect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends His sakina, His tranquility, and His mercy upon those who sit in these majalis. And the malaika, they will sit and they will listen, and then after that, they report to their creator. The malaika then report to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the majlis is complete, and they will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, We found a group of your slaves, and they mentioned you. And they seek your refuge, and they seek your forgiveness, and they seek Jannah. And subhanallah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His infinite mercy, He narrates this to us to propel us, to encourage us to sit in these majalis. So perhaps that we are mentioned to the mala'i la'la. And in one narration, it is said that a man amongst them, he was just passing by. Fajilas. He wasn't even paying attention, but he sat in this majlis. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, He is amongst them. Tilk al qawm. He is amongst those people. And he, that person, even though he was passing by and he sat and he wasn't really paying attention, he will receive the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be forgiven and to be admitted into Jannah and to be safeguarded from the hellfire. I ask and I beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that are forgiven for all of our sins the big and the small sins, the ones that we forgot and the ones that we have mentioned. And I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to admit us into the highest Jannah and to protect us from Jahannam al billah. Allahumma amin. La zilna ma'a qisas al-anbiya. And we are still continuing with the stories of the Prophets. And we left off when Banu Israel were at war with the the uh, Canaaniyun, the Canaanites, the Jababir. And we said that their prophet at this time, does anybody remember the prophet's name? La laysa yusha. Man ba'd yusha. Sam'oon, Shamweed, or Shamweed? Samuel. No? No. Their prophet at this time was Shamweed. Shamweed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designated for them a king. Does anybody remember the king's name? Talut. Talut Hamalik. This was a trying time because at this pivotal moment is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that they go and they fight for their land, Bayt al Maqdis, Palestine, which was the prophecy that they had to fulfill. When they reached the army of Jalut, who was Goliath in English, there has to be a challenge, a mubaraza, uh, a sort of uh, appetizer, as they say. 
So the strongest of the opposing army is to face the strongest of the other army. And they, Goliath, Jaluth, he was the general of his army. And the Jababira, these people, like I mentioned to you, they were not to be messed around with. They were physically, mentally, strategically, very powerful people when it came to war. So Goliath, he challenged the army of Talut. And he said, which one of you will challenge me to a duel? And at this moment, if you read Tafsir al-Tabari, he mentioned, he said that Jalut, the king of Banu Israel, turned to his people and he said, whoever amongst you steps forward to challenge him, then I will give him half of my wealth and I will marry him to my daughter. Meaning he will inherit my kingship, my kingdom. And the only one who stepped forward was a young man. A young man, just in his early teens. And he stepped forward and he was prepared by the king, Talut, with the armor. And when he stood in front of Goliath, if you read the tafsir, there's a lot of details. Goliath mocked him. He says, and you guys sent me the youngest member of your army to challenge me. And not only that, Dawood preferred to use the sling as a weapon, not a sword. So when Goliath saw this, he said, how, how is it that you could oppose me with, with rocks and a sling? And we said, and we mentioned, and I always reiterate this point, the people who inherited Dawood are still alive today. Atfal al They are the children of Philistine. Fa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He puts this in perspective. And He says, By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fahazamuhum bi And remember, one of the signs of Talut that he was the king of Ben Israel is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought back Tabut, the Tabut of Musa, the Tabut of Ben Israel, Tabut of Sakina. But because they had that, that doesn't mean they won the war because of that. This is a very important point that I missed last week. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies that Ben Israel defeated Goliath and his army by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Dawood slung a single rock the riwayah was three rocks and in this in the tafsir al-tabari he says one single rock and it's, it smashed Goliath right between the forehead and that was his end yani, this shows us that Qudratullah Azza wa Jal is above everything. وَشَأْنُهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَجَلَّ فِي عُلَاهِ is above everything. His will is above everything. فَهُوَ الَّذِي يَأْمُرْ سُبْحَانَهُ وَجَلَّ فِي عُلَاهِ So at this moment, Banu Israel proclaimed the victory and they entered Philistine, Bayt al-Maqdus. And Banu Israel praised Dawood, this young man who had destroyed the king or the, the, the opposing army and the opposing enemy, which was uh, Goliath. And he was honored by Talut, the king of Banu Israel, and Shamwi. The time passed and Shamwi passed away. And Talut, the king of Banu Israel, also passed away and he was his position was taken by Dawood and this was the beginning of his nubu'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions about Dawood, how he was the first of all the anbiya of Ben Israel to become a prophet, a messenger, and a king at the same time. وَشَدَدْنَا مُلْكَهُ وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحِكْمَةِ وَفَصْلَ الْخِطَابِ 
هي هاد ذا كينج شيب الحكمه ها هنا التفسير الدليل انها النبوءه سو هي واز ا كينج اند ذا بروفيت اوف بنو اسرائيل ات ذا سيم تايم بيفور ذس بنو اسرائيل وود هاف ا ديزيجنيتد كينج اند ا بروفيت that was designated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there would often be quarrels, huh? Because the king sometimes would go against the prophet, and then the people would follow the king, and so on. So this was the first time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that Dawood would be a king and a prophet and a messenger of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions a few Very interesting facts about Dawood. يقول جل في علاه واذكر عبدنا داود ذا الأيد إنه أواب. And mention or reflect upon our slave Dawood. The Aid meaning the able body, the very strong. إنه أواب. He was very diligent in his ibadah. إِنَّا سَخَّرْنَا الْجِبَالَ مَعَهُ يُسَبِّحْنَ بِالْعَشِيِّ وَالْإِشْرَاقِ وَالطَّيْرَ مَحْشُورَةً كُلٌّ لَهُ أَوَّابٌ Dawood والسلام, had many interesting characteristics. Amongst them was that he was very devout in his worship, in his ibadah. The best salah that was cited was the Salah of Dawood He would reserve a third of the night, a third of the night, every night of his life for Salah. He would be constantly making tasbih and reciting the Zabur. The best Salm, the best fasting was the fasting of who? Dawood He would fast one day on and one day off. His entire life. His entire life. And the best dua, وجاءت رواية, amongst the ad'iyah that Dawood used to make, and Abid Darda رضي الله عنه ورضا قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, كان من دعاء داود. Listen to this beautiful dua. اللهم إني أسألك حبك. O oh Allah, I ask you of your love. وَحُبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّكَ وَعَمَلٌ الَّذِي يُبَلِّغُنِي حُبَّكَ اللهم جعل حبك أحب إلي من نفسي وأهلي ومالي ومن المال البارد عنهم. O oh Allah, I ask you for your love. And I ask you to love that which gets me closer to your love. And I ask you to love those who love you. And I ask you to make your love, Habbullah, more dear to me, more beloved to me than myself, min nafsi. And who can say this? Wa ahli, and my family, and my wealth, and cool, refreshing water upon thirst. Allahu Akbar. Ani. Just, you can picture, this is how devout. He was to the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no mubalagha here. If you look at the Sufiya, balagho fi hubbihim min Allah. There is no mubalagha here. You have to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than you love yourself. Because when it's time for salah, you want to watch the game, you want to relax, but you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he loves what? Salatu fi waqtiha. So you get up and you make wudu in the cold. You stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the a'mal. These are the proofs of the pudding as they say. If you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, after that the martaba is who? Who do you love next? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're at the bottom. Wait and wait, wait. You're at the bottom. Hubbullah, Hubbu Rasulih sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then if you have your parents, Ummuk, 
from the womb to the womb. Then comes your father. So So one of his adriya was this. And the best of voices was the voice of Dawood His voice was so beautiful that when he recited the Zabur, the Jibal, the Jibal, the mountains around him would make tasbih. He used to hear the tasbih of the jibal. And the birds, as they flew over, they would hover. When they heard his voice, they would stop in awe. Because he had such a beautiful voice. لِذِكْرِهِ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لِقْرَاءَةِ لِلْزَّبُورِ And they would make tasbih. Subhanallah. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, Sahabi radiallahu anhu arlah, he was noted to have a very beautiful voice, very beautiful tilawah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam overheard him reciting. And he told him something. He says, لَقَدْ أُوْتِيتَ you have been given a single vocal from the vocals that have been given to Dawood. I mean, the notes. So you can only imagine, subhanAllah, how his voice was. Tabarakallah. And there is a point here that is very important. If you want to know the Quran, Kalamullah, Quran al Karim, is beautiful if you follow the rules. You don't have to have a stellar voice at a high pitch. You don't have to know all the maqamat. If you read it with the ahkam, and you read it with the khushu'a, and you recite the words, forget the word read, recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be beautiful. It will sound beautiful. But if you read it like you read a newspaper or an article, So one of the secrets of having a beautiful recitation is khushun. If you understand what you are reciting, first of all, you have to understand whose words are these. Huh? It's in the words of Allah. It is not mere words. These are the greatest words. So when you recite, read, recite with the ahkam. Take your time. Understand what you are reciting. And by that, it will sound beautiful, inshaAllah. So Abi Musa al Ash'ari, who is one of the most notable Sahaba to have a very astounding voice. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told him, he says, you have been given one single vocal of the vocals that were given to Dawood. Allahu Akbar. When we say that Dawood alayhi salatu wa salam had the best siyam, the best salah, the best, that does not mean he is better than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. Abu Qasim Sayyid al-Khalq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yani, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would make istighfar in the, in, the, in the same jalsa, in one jalsa, akthar min mi'ath marra. He would designate 40 rak'ahs every night. Rasulullah, Habibullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa, and by the way, qiyam upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is wajib. Wajib. Hadi min, 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 min af'al al-ikhtisasiyah, al-makhsusa bi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qiyam was wajib upon him. So when we say that Dawood was the best, is the best in that time, era. Rasulullah in history, from the beginning to the end of creation, Ahsanul Khalq, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He gifted Dawood a gift that would transfer on. He says, وَأَلَنَّا لَهُ الحديد. Dawood was the first 
to take metal, metal is a mineral, metal, and he would molt it with his bare hands. It would become paper in his hands. Well, just, just imagine, he would take molten rocks and metal from, from the ground and they would melt in his hands and he would craft shields and, and, and weaponry and, and armor and everything with his own hands. Rasulullah he used to eat كان يأكل من كسب يده. He, Dawud was the king of Banu Israel, the prophet and the messenger of Allah. And he would work to feed himself and his family. So he would make and, and mold metal with his hands. And by the way, Allah Alam, he was the first sighted in history to do this. With, with his hands. And he would sell the goods for money to eat. And this is a point that is very important in nowadays. A lot of the young guys who are continuously scrolling through their phones as I'm talking, they think that they can make millions while sitting down at home. You have this pipe dream that they have sold you that maybe if you invested in, in blue coin or I don't know what, huh? you could have made, you could have made a billion dollars they say. You, if you invested $10 in 1992, you would have made $10 billion. Habibi, just go out and get a job, yeah? But many of us, uh, we say, no, it's too tiresome. And I'll, give you, I'll give you my advice. Huh? And I'm, I'm no better than you. I am no better than you. You need to establish yourself. You have two options. Either you exhaust the educational system and you get a high paying degree or you learn a skilled trade. These are the two things that I see in today's society that you can succeed with bi'idnillah. But if you're gonna sit there and wait for a pipe dream or a miracle or you know, one, two clicks and you made a... Wait, wait, there's a lineup. There's a lineup. You know, the youth nowadays, they have an issue where it, you know, it's shameful. I, I, I shovel snow or I salt the, the sidewalk. Do you know how much those guys are making an hour? $50 an hour plus. Do the math. Yeah, it's hard work. Yeah, they have callous. But they're making money, alhamdulillah. And they're eating halal. Sahulillah. So Dawood, who is the king of Banu Israel, Nabi Allah, he would work with metal and sell it. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions an incident, and we're going to conclude with this insha'Allah. He used to, Dawood والسلام, would divide his time for specific reasons. He had a time for salah, a time for his family, a time where he would mediate between the people, a time where he'd give them uh, advice, and he had a specific time for counseling. Any people who had issues, uh, problems that needed to be resolved, this would be the time where they would come to see Dawood والسلام, And he was very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. So he would always yahkum bil haq. In Surah Sa'd, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, بعد أعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهل أتاك نبأ الخصم إذ تسوروا المحراب In this incident, Dawood والسلام, has reserved the time for his ibadah. He's in the mihrab, in the monastery. And from what we know from the ayah, the monastery is on a higher level. Two men climbed تسوروا المحراب and entered upon him. وَهُوَ يُصَلِّي يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَ فَفَزِعَ مِنْهُمْ إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَى دَاوُودَ فَفَزِعَ مِنْهُمْ When they entered upon him, he was startled. First of all, how did you get up here? Second of all, this is not the time for, for mediation or counseling. What's going on? قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ They said, don't be afraid. 
خصمان بغى بعضنا بعضا فاحكم بيننا بالحق We have a disagreement We need your counseling We need you to rule and judge So in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these two men قال إن هذا أخي One of them spoke and he says This is my brother في التفسير it says that he is not the direct brother Okay Rather business partner Allahu a'lam Al-Muhim, these two men were actually angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to Dawood in the form of men. There's a trial. So he says, they said to Dawood alayhi salatu wa salam, inna hadha akhi lahu tis'un wa tis'un al This is my brother, this is my business partner. He has 99 female sheep or goat, na'jah. The, these are the Bitcoin of that day, by the way. <laughs> huh? Because they actually generate an income and milk. And I only have one. So the one who has 99 has put pressure on the one who only has one. وَعَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ يعني He overwhelmed me, he overpowered me to give him, to sell him that one. So he can complete المئة. Huh? So now, that guy has taken all the female sheep or goat, and that guy has got nothing. فَعَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ وَعَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ قَالَ لَقَدْ ظَنَمَكَ بِسُؤَالِ نَعْجَتِكَ إِلَى نِعَجِكَ in the tafsir, the Mufassirun, they said, Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam, he deliberated before hearing the other party. Before hearing the other party. In the Zahir, this is what we have. Is that he did not listen to the other part, he only listened to the first. So he said, he has wronged you by asking you and pressuring you to sell your you are single one. This is a very important part. Al Khurata Huna is business partners. He says, Alayhi Salatu Salam, the majority of partnerships. The majority of business partners will inherently want what each other have. And any businessman here will agree. And this is not everyone, but the majority. And this is why the ulama have said, if you can avoid partnerships, if you can go in on a business by yourself, you definitely should not seek partnerships. This is a trial. Money, walukum, fitna, fitna. And when you go into business with different people, Allah is not. And I've heard and I've counseled disastrous partnerships because everything, everything comes down to the money. If you are going to a, into a partnership, ensure that you are partnering up with someone you trust, someone that is credible, and ensure, ensure that you cite everything by writing. This is critical. Many of us, we have adopted the old ways before Islam, pre-Islam, of just taking, you know, word of mouth. Huh? We take you for what you said. La This is the deen. This is the counsel of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Write everything down, cite everything down. So Dawood alayhi salam, hakam and he says, he has wronged you by asking you. And then he realized that this is a trial from Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi Now, there is other riwayat, and you perhaps came across them. And these are from the Israeliyat. These are from Banu Israel, that they say, this was based on women. The Najah is actually, you know, a metaphor for women. 
These riwayat are ba'idah. I will not even care to mention the details of them because I, I, do, not, I do not take by them. So in this situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He shows us how Dawood والسلام, deliberated and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him and increased him in ilm and knowledge. And this is for anyone who's anyone that's going to sit and preside over people or, or counsel people. Hear both sides of the story. Don't be hasty, even though sometimes, and I've received a call once, I remember. Yani, subhanallah. One sister called me from the community and she was asking for khulaf. And I'm in no position to, to give her this, obviously. So I heard the story, and it was a long story. It's Allah and and yasir umuruna ajma'in. And I felt yani, sympathetic. First of all, it's a woman. Second of all, yani, there's, it's a traumatic experience for her to ask for this. It's something severe. And then I spoke to my Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Rahman, Allah. He said, first of all, we need to speak to the existing husband. So I had to dig until I got in contact with him. And then the story banned. So make sure, make sure, if you are, even amongst your own family, listen to both sides. Everyone has a right, and everyone has a claim, and everyone, inshallah, will be upon the haqq. But you, as, as a person who is intermediating between a couple or, or a family, take the time to understand both sides. And I think we'll stop it here, inshallah. Next week, we'll continue with the qissa of Dawood, alayhi salatu wa salam. Subhanakallah wa alhamdulillah, ashadu wa illa ilaha illa anta, astaghfirullah wa tubu alayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.